It is the night before Thanksgiving 2018, and here in southern New England, we are getting ready for one of the, if not the coldest, Thanksgiving days of all time on record here in New England. We're talking about daytime high temperatures of just 20 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and that's not including how the wind is going to feel because it's going to be breezy, so it's going to feel closer to zero degrees Fahrenheit during the day tomorrow. That's with the sun outside, so it's not going to feel very good. I do remember for my senior year in 1989-1990, so Thanksgiving Day 1989, uh, I was in the marching band for Greenfield High School, and the football game we did that day uh, was also pretty cold. There was some snow on the ground. Uh, <laughs> you could not put enough layers on that day. Thankfully, I'm not in the marching band. I don't have to worry about being outside tomorrow. I'll be spending Thanksgiving in front of my TV watching three hopefully very good football games, gorging myself on some turkey, and thinking to myself how I can stay warm. And when I was thinking about what I wanted to cover for this episode of Unsealed, I wanted to think warm. And what better way to think warm than to think about beach volleyball games? Because there aren't very many of them. It's a sport that I enjoy. I actually played volleyball for a year in high school. I wasn't great at it, but it was the one sport that I could call myself a quote-unquote athlete. Uh, I played that from time to time. Now, it wasn't beach volleyball. There were five aside. It wasn't two-on-two like beach volleyball is. But I still have some familiarity with the sport. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the sport is not very well represented, but on the NES, there were two games of note that I enjoyed, one more than the other, but I'm going to talk about both before we get to a different system in the main course for this episode of Unsealed. So let's talk about the first game, and the first game is this one right here. This is Kings of the Beach, which was published by Ultra Games, or as we know them, Konami Games. Uh, this game is a very straight-up pretty faithful two-on-two beach volleyball game that incorporates a lot of real volleyball feel to it. Uh, it's not over-the-top arcade, but it's still fairly accessible for someone who's interested in playing a volleyball game. And when you're playing the game, you can't help but feel, you can almost feel the slight breeze off the ocean, the sand in your toes. Ah, just thinking about it takes me back to warm weather in the beach, and we it felt like it was just warm a few months ago. In fact, it was, but that's so long since gone. Um... Whether I recommend this game or not is completely uh, your call. It is not one of the best sports games on the NES, but if you like volleyball games, you can do worse than this. Uh, it does have a couple of real-life volleyball players. The one that I, the name I always remember is Sinjin Smith. I don't remember his partner in crime, and I'm not about to go look it up right now. Um, the game looks fine. The music, of course, being a Konami game is above average to excellent, and the game is fairly easy to pick up and play. Not to mention the fact that this is one of those four-player games, so if you have a four-score or a satellite, you can play up to four players and, and share your beach volleyball joy with up to three friends. It's also worth playing on your own, too. Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing superb about it, but it is a slightly above average game for the NES, and if you like volleyball, why not give it a shot? But my favorite beach volleyball game. It still remains to this day, not to mention one of my favorite NES games of all time. When people ask me to come up with lists of my favorite NES games, this is one that always pops up on the list. Now, this I only have in cartridge form as part of a, uh, a two set. Uh, I don't have the standalone cartridge. I do want to get it at some point. But it is Super Spike V-Ball, which is part of the Super Spike V-Ball Nintendo World Cup bundle for the NES. Super Spike V-Ball was developed by Technos Corporation, uh, the same guys that gave us Double Dragon and River City Ransom and Super Dodgeball. So it's going to be over-the-top action. It is going to be a lot of action. Uh, this actually is based, uh, Super Spike V-Ball, is based on the V-Ball coin-op uh, and actually cleans it up and does a lot right with it. So it brings home the best parts of that game without feeling really like a quarter munching arcade game you can play it from one to four players it is two on two uh the double dragon twins are here if you want to go ahead and play as them uh there are single player campaign modes you can play multiplayer up to four players it is a lot of fun the music is great the over-the-top graphics are great too uh it is a game that i highly strongly recommend if you don't own it in your nes library and if you like soccer if you get this bundle here you get a nintendo world cup which is also a very good soccer game as well uh soccer isn't one of my favorite sports but when i do play soccer games this is one that i like to revisit every now and again. So Super Spike V-Ball for the NES, one of my favorite NES games and one that I strongly recommend. 
But those are sealed, right? That's not what you guys are here to see. No, you guys want to see me open up a brand new factory sealed game, and that's what we're going to do. So I did some digging. I looked high and low for this particular game because when we're talking about the GameCube, we're talking about a system that didn't have a ton of exclusives, but what exclusives it did have, at least from one particular company, always tend to stand out to me. And one of those exclusives from Sega for the Nintendo GameCube is this guy right here. This is Beach Spikers Virtua Beach Volleyball for the Nintendo GameCube. This was released in 2002, uh, and I believe this was an arcade game originally. This is a Yu Suzuki game, by the way. This is an AM2 game. I don't know if it shows it on the front. It does not. But this is an AM2 game. It looks, it feels, it sounds, it handles like an arcade game should. Uh, it's not quite to the highest of the highs like uh, Super Spike V-Ball is, in my opinion. But it is still a very enjoyable beach volleyball game. It does focus on women's beach volleyball. There aren't any male competitors here. Uh, there are some very interesting aspects in terms of the relationship between the two players and the team, their, their teamwork, the way they get along. But we'll talk about that when we open up the instruction manual. Uh, we take a look at the back of the case here. Again, we do see some screenshots. We do see some, uh, some female volleyball players in their bikinis. And it says, Beach Volleyball has never been hotter. Uh, let's take a look and see what the rest of it says here. So you can bump, set, and spike. Gorgeous graphics and beautiful female athletes. Choose from 16 teams or create your own. Set arcade versus world tour and training modes. World tour mode is the one that's got a lot of meat on it for solo players like myself. And Spike, one to four player action delivers fierce two on two competition. So much like Kings of the Beach and Super Spike V Ball, this is up to four players. And because the Nintendo GameCube has those four controller ports on the front, you didn't have to buy any extra accessories. You could just plug in four GameCube controllers and off and running you would go. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to open this up, and we're going to see what is inside. I was very excited to find this because this is one of my favorite GameCube games, bar none. Uh, not only is it a sports game, but it's exclusive, and it's a lot of fun to play. Sometimes it gets a little bit on the frustrating side, or it gets overly difficult. But when you're playing just the arcade mode, if you have the difficulty settings the way you want them, it is still highly enjoyable. So as we open up the case here, um, yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah, this is awesome. So when we open up the case here, we do see the manual. We do see the disc. The disc is in blue and orange. Uh, for whatever reason, it gives me a little bit of a Sonic vibe, which is fine with me uh, as Sonic is, uh, Sonic is okay in my book. Uh, these are these mini DVDs that Nintendo used for the GameCube, uh, which was the focus of... Uh, some infighting, uh, and certainly gave some limitations to these games because sometimes you had to send these on two, three, and even four disc sets. Uh, Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes is one example that needed multiple discs. Uh, Lord of the Rings A Third Age, I think, is another one. And there are some other notorious examples out there as well. So that's what the disc looks like. And as we take a look at what is inside, I'm going to get to the manual here in just a minute. Uh, we do have, as we always get, the precautions booklet from Nintendo, talking about precautions and using a GameCube, what and what not to do. We also have the infamous Sega product registration. You could order, you could uh, register online, or you could send this in. I've talked about these before. There's nothing really unusual here, uh, although it is very nice of. Sega to not ask us for postage if we were going to mail this in. Uh, I've talked about these before. I'm not going to waste a lot of time on the product registration card, but it is here. And here is the instruction manual with the blue sky and the character getting ready to, to serve the ball. It looks like a jump serve over the net. On the back, we see all of the players in the game. Uh, the manual, unfortunately, is not in color. It is in black and white, which is okay, but you like to see color manuals if you can possibly get them. Uh, it talks about the play controls. Uh, it talks about some of the rules for volleyball. I believe this is a progressive scan game. There, Yeah, so this, is, this has progressive scan in it, which is kind of cool. Um, and I wanted to get to the World Tour mode just really quick uh, because that's the meat of the game for solo players. So you can create a team and characters and compete in a World Tour to 
to aim for the championship. In each stage, you will compete in a 16-team tournament. There are eight tournaments in all, and you will be ranked according to the overall points. So you can use original teams, edited teams, or you can use some of the preset teams in the game. You do earn points that you can distribute between the players to make them better as you progress through tournaments. You're not going to win every tournament. I don't care how good you are. Maybe like the best of the best will win every single tournament. But if you're an average player, you're going to win tournaments. And then some tournaments you're going to finish like third or fifth or maybe even in last place and if you have a particularly uh terrible game uh that does happen i uh, put your name your country you can change the player's hair face uniform um then you do uh, different tour stops in the game. And one of the things that I remember about this is there's certain product placement in the game as well. Uh, so if you're not a fan of advertising, this may bother you a little bit, but I thought it added some realism to the game. It is pretty easy to play. It's a very meter-based game. Uh, so timing is certainly important. Uh, but it's very easy once you get the hang of the controls. And there's a tutorial that shows you how to do everything uh, to bump, set, spike, player positioning, all that stuff is very easy to learn. You can probably pick it up in about, I'd say about 20 to 30 minutes. And it seems like a lot of time to put in, but once you get the handle of the basics, it is a really enjoyable game to play. And as I said, if you do play it, you will note the arcade influence here. There is Yu Suzuki all over this game, and that's certainly a good thing. And yes, this takes you back to the beach, back to warm weather. 80, 85 degrees, you can hear the ocean in the background, you can feel the sand in your feet, and boy, it's going to be a long time before we get that again around here in southern New England, as winter is upon us, as is the holiday season officially, and this gives me the opportunity to wish you and yours a very happy holiday season, no matter how you spend it or how you observe it. Uh, I am going away this weekend, but when I come back, I just finished... Uh, some eBay orders, so I have some more games coming in for Unsealed. I still do have a very big pile of games behind me, including a mini series that I'll be starting hopefully next week uh, that'll be talking about some basketball as we are now really into the, um, the start of the basketball seasons for both college and pro. Uh, so I'm looking forward to bringing that to you as well. If you've played Beach Spikers before, or maybe you've played Super Spike V-Ball or Kings of the Beach, I'd love to hear about your experiences with those. Go ahead and leave me a comment below and talk about them, and I would love to read them, and I'll maybe even respond to a few if I get some time. So again, happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Happy holidays. There are more Unsealed episodes to come, as well as some more streams. And until the next time, my friends, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you later.